When we think of Axis powers, Germany, Japan and Italy are often the first which come to mind. Though, these weren't the only nations to buddy up under Hitler and fight the Allies in the Second World War. Several other European states fell into Germany's gravity and became Nazi satellite states. And some of these states proved to be key allies, paving Hitler's warpath and spilling their own blood alongside the Germans. For a quick history lesson, expanding empires exploiting satellite states goes back to at least the 19th century and at the Napoleonic Wars in which Napoleon milked the resources and military power of his satellites. Such as the Duchy of Warsaw, which fought the Australian, oops, I mean Austrian Empire and supported the Grande Armee in several campaigns, including the invasion of Russia. Back to World War II, we're going to now discuss three German satellite states and their contributions to the Tausend Jahre Reich, which definitely didn't last a thousand years. With Hitler's thumbs up, the first Slovak Republic declared its independence from Czechoslovakia on the 14th of March 1939. Until April 1945, it was governed by the Klerofascist Slovak People's Party and its leader, Josef Tiso, in collaboration with the Nazis. On the 24th of November 1940, the first Slovak Republic signed on as an Axis power. Between the 1st and 16th of September 1939, more than 50,000 soldiers across three divisions of the Slovak Field Army Brnolak, reinforced by the German 14th Army, invaded Poland while the Polish military was busy getting steamrolled by the German war machine. With the Poles distracted, the Slovaks stole the Polish territory they intended to without much resistance, taking a little over 150 casualties. Before they were withdrawn later in September, they took some 1,350 civilian prisoners and gifted them to the Germans and also the Soviets. When Hitler turned on the USSR, the Slovaks sat back a while before committing 45,000 troops of the Slovak Expeditionary Army Group to the offensive. This expeditionary force, however, was a hot mess, so the Germans took its best and brightest and attached them to the German 17th Army. The rest they sent back to cover the rear. The Slovaks fought under the German 17th Army for about a month, including the Battle of Uman, which turned out to be disastrous for the Soviets. Long story short, Axis encirclements ripped the Red Army to shreds and inflicted more than 200,000 casualties for an Axis blood payment of just 20,800. Not long after Uman, the entirety of the Slovak Expeditionary Army Group was divided into two infantry divisions, of which only one was a frontline fighting force. This division, the Slovak 1st, fought with German Army Group B through the Soviet Union until it was eaten alive by poor morale and subsequently assigned to construction work, joining the Slovak 2nd Division. It's clear that many Slovaks didn't want to fight and die for Hitler, as in the 1944 Slovak National Uprising, many fought against Tiso and the Germans in the Slovak Republic, to no avail. Soon after, the Soviets liberated the state from fascist rule, for more fascist rule. In the lead up to the Second World War, the Kingdom of Hungary was suffering the Great Depression, and the light at the end of the tunnel was no light at all, but Hitler's grinning face and at Mussolini's shining bald head. Dependent on German and Italian trade, Hungary started to walk and talk like Germany and, on the 20th of November 1940, Hungarian Prime Minister Paul Teleki took out his pen and signed Hitler's cast, which was actually the Tripartite Pact. Hungry for land, and now an Axis lad, Hungary mustered its armies. When Hitler asked Hungary to help him invade Yugoslavia and take a slab of it as a reward, Prime Minister Paul Teleki shot himself dead, and Laszlo Bardoshi took his place. After Germany had softened Yugoslavia up, Hungarian regent Miklos Horthy sent in some 80,000 Hungarian troops, who occupied several Yugoslavia territories with relative ease, taking casualties in only the hundreds. 
Things got much bloodier for Hungary from there on, and then they really hit the fan. Hitler directed the German war machine into the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June 1941, and Hungary jumped on the bandwagon just five days later, declaring war on the USSR. Under Operation Barbarossa, the Hungarians fought alongside the Germans with utmost barbarity, though Hungary paid the price for its deal with the devil in the Battle of Stalingrad. Stalingrad was of course the turning point of the war in Europe, and of the 868,000 Axis casualties sustained in this Axis defeat, up to 143,000 of them were Hungarian, amounting to more than 70% of the troops Hungary committed to the battle. In short, Hungary's best equipped army was undone. During the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union, Hungarian regent Miklos Horthy kicked Laszlo Bartosi out and assigned Miklos Kalei as the next Hungarian Prime Minister. Fearing an over-dependence on Germany, Kalei started dealing under the table, negotiating with the Western Allies while still at war with the Soviets. Unfortunately for Hungary, Hitler caught wind of Kalei's deceit and in March 1944, the Germans invaded and occupied Hungary and then made the Hungarians fight for them against the Soviets, until the Soviets themselves occupied the country. In the siege of Budapest alone, some 38,000 Hungarian soldiers became casualties, as did a further 38,000 civilians. An armistice was signed in January 1945, though some die-hard Hungarians fought alongside the Germans until the end of the war in Europe. Under King Carol II, no, not your Aunt Carol, the Kingdom of Romania opted to remain neutral at the start of the Second World War. Though, with Europe up in the air and fascists inside of Romania kicking up a fuss, siding with the Germans was looking better and better. After the Romanian government willingly gave up pieces of territory to the Soviets throughout 1940, the Romanian people, especially the fascists, were outraged. So Romanian Marshal Ion Antonescu seized the opportunity and staged a coup. Once in power, Romania's new dictator, Antonescu, steered the country toward the Axis, which it joined on the 23rd of November 1940. Antonescu and Hitler were tight, with the Führer stating that Antonescu was the only foreigner he consulted with on military matters. As such, Antonescu was more than happy to lend his axe to Hitler in Operation Barbarossa. At the start of the operation, the Romanian army boasted a strength of 686,000, and by August 1944, this figure had almost doubled, making Romania Germany's number one supplier of manpower in the war, contributing more troops than all of Germany's other buddies combined. As a reward, the Germans helped the Romanians take some of the territory which they had ceded to the Soviets back from the Soviets. Fighting side by side, the Romanian 3rd and 4th Armies and German 11th Army invaded the regions of Bessarabia, Northern Bukovina and Herza and beat the Red Army out of them at a price of over 21,700 casualties, for Red Army casualties of just under 17,900. After making good on his promise and gifting these regions to Antonescu, the Romanian armies went deeper into the USSR helping them gain victories in operations such as the Battle of Uman and the sieges of Odessa and Sevastopol. Things went mostly sour for the Romanians after that, especially in the Battle of Stalingrad, in which the Romanian 3rd and 4th armies took 158,000 casualties and were largely undone. While Romanians were dying for Hitler in the USSR, Romania herself was open to attack and the Western Allies laid waste to her industry in strategic bombing operations. This softened Romania up, and after the tide turned in favour of the Soviets on the Eastern Front, the Romanian army, bolstered by the German 8th Army, had to fight off a full-blown Soviet invasion. In said invasion, known as the Jassy Kishinev Offensive, a further 200,000 Romanians became casualties of war, while the Germans sustained 150,000 casualties. During this battle, King Michael I of Romania the former King Carol II's son staged a coup of his own, and this ultimately led to the execution of Antonescu and Romania becoming an allied power for the rest of the war. Now, Romania fought against Germany with over 1 million men, of which more than half became casualties before the end of the war in Europe. But what do you think? Did you know that there were more than just three Axis powers? Did you know just how much blood the Slovak Republic, Hungary and Romania paid toward the German war effort? 
Would you like to learn more about these state's contributions and some heroic individual stories of the soldiers within? Let us know in the comments section below. And just before you go, guys, make sure you check out the links in the description below. If you want to join our wider history community, do check us out on our Discord. And if you want to help support the channel more than you already are by watching this video and want access to an exclusive video you won't find anywhere else, then do consider donating to the Patreon. And if you want access to other exclusive content, check out our Facebook and Instagram pages too. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.